Hello students, this is Mrs. Yaud, and today I'm going to teach you Chapter 4, Lesson 4 for my Algebra 1 students. This is Scatter Plots and Lines of Fit. I will also be talking a little bit about what there's going to be in 4.5, which is Analyzing Lines of Fit, and we will not be doing a formal lesson on 4.5. Please have your journals open to page 113. A scatter plot is a graph of points that shows the relationship between two sets of data. It's called a, called a scatter plot because it looks like there's a bunch of points that are just scattered onto the graph. A correlation explains how the data sets are related. In my three examples that I have here, I have this first one where the points are kind of going in an upward position. And so this would be called a positive correlation. In this second example, the points are kind of going in a downward trend. So this would be a negative correlation. And lastly, I have one where they're just kind of all over the place. You cannot tell whether it's positive or negative. So this would be a no correlation at all. I will talk to you a little bit more about correlation in the notes below. The line of fit is the equation of the line that best fits the data that it's given. I'd like to do some more uh, notes down in this bottom section here. So usually in class, I have my students make lines of best fit to their best of their ability. And then I also teach how to do it on Desmos, uh, where you can make a line of best fit. I would like to focus this lesson on just using Desmos to create that line of best fit, because that's going to be mathematically the best way to do it. Step one would be to, once you're on Desmos, create an XY table with all of your data points. Step two is in a new cell, you're going to be writing this. Y sub one is approximately, that's what this is, is you don't write equal to, so y sub 1 is approximately m x sub 1 plus b. So what it's going to do is it's going to take your uh, x, y table. And actually, it's going to be calling it, uh, it'll look something like this, x sub 1. And then there's going to be a line. And then it'll be y sub 1. And you'll have all of your data sets here. And so the next line will take each one of these points, x1, y1, and create a line of best fit. And this is how you create a line of best fit. You'll notice that this looks like the equation of the line, y equals mx plus b. The difference is that you use y sub 1 and x sub 1 so that Desmos knows to use this set of data. And you want it to approximate. That's why it's a best fit. OK? And then what it's going to give you is it's going to give you three bits of data. It's going to tell you what your slope is. It's going to tell you what your y-intercept is. And that would be just like the slope and y-intercept that you normally use. And then it's also going to tell you something called the r-value. The r-value has to do with that correlation that I was talking about earlier, trying to decide how is this data set correlated with the line of best fit? Does it fit really closely to the line or is it kind of off a little bit? So let's talk a little bit more about correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient or R value tells you how closely the data fits the line. And it's always going to be between negative one and positive one. So if you have a correlation coefficient that's really, really close to negative one, that means that it has a strong negative correlation. So for example, if you were to look at it on a graph, the points would be very, very close to a line. And so, I mean, you might have maybe one little point off of there, but the points are really, really close to a straight line that's heading in the negative direction. If you have something that is around negative 0.5, it's going to be a weak negative correlation. So if you were to look at a graph, you could see that it's heading down, but the points aren't quite creating a line, but it is heading in the downward direction. But there's a few points that are off of the line, and so it doesn't look very it doesn't look nearly as strong of a correlation as the negative one does. A zero correlation means that the points are all over the place and it doesn't look 
either negative nor positive. You can probably guess what this is going to be. A 0 0.5 correlation will be weak positive, and it means that the points are going to be heading up in, in some sort of semblance, but it's not going to be a super strong. And then a one, a correlation of one, means that it has a strong positive correlation, and so the points look like they're in a straight line heading in the positive direction. On the extra practice on the next page, um, we are not going to be creating our line of best fit. We're just going to be using this scatter plot here to answer the question. So this scatter plot shows the weights in pounds of a baby over time. So we have X is the age in months and Y is the weight in pounds. So we're just going to use this uh, to help us answer the question. So the first question says, what is the weight of the baby when the baby is four months old. So we need to find out when the baby is four months old and go up, and that would be 14 pounds. So our answer is 14 pounds. The next question says, what is the age of the baby when the baby weighs 17.2 pounds? So I'm gonna look at my weight in pounds. 17.2 is right around here, so I'm gonna come across. It looks like it's that point there. So the answer would be eight months. And the last question asks, what tends to happen to the weight of the baby as the age increases? So as you can see, it's a positive correlation. So as the age increases, the weight also increases. On the next page, it says, in exercises two through five, tell whether X and Y show a positive, a negative, or no correlation. So on number two, you'll notice that the points are headed up and to the right. So this would be a positive correlation. I would like for you to answer questions three, four, and five. Decide whether it is a positive, a negative, or no correlation. For number three, I got negative correlation because it's heading down. For number four, I got no correlation because it looks like they're all over the place and I can't tell whether it's heading up or down. And for number five, it looks like it's heading up, so I wrote positive correlation. In number six, we are given a table, and this table has the depth in centimeters of water that's filling a bathtub after X minutes. So here's our X minutes, um, zero minutes all the way up to 12 minutes, and then this is how deep the water is here. So what they want us to do is write an equation that models the depth and they want us to interpret the information. So the slope, the y-intercept, we're also going to interpret the, the r value even though they didn't ask us to do that in this problem. So I'm going to have you do this using Desmos. So the first thing you need to do is open up a new Desmos tab. This is not the student Desmos, this is just plain old desmos.com and choose the graphing calculator. So when you get into the cal graphing calculator, the first thing you do is click on this plus sign here and then choose table. After you choose table, you're going to enter in all of your data points. So you'll notice that that's what I did here is I entered in all the data points and you will see them start to show up on your graph after each time you enter. You might need to shift your graph around a bit so that you, you see them all because it probably will center in on the origin and will not show all the points. So that means that you'll have to adjust your graph and you just drag it to where you need it to be so that you can see all of the points. I would like for you to pause the video and follow these steps right now so that you can work along with me and practice on your own. Come back to the video when you're done. Okay, so now that you have all of your data in, it's time to create our line of best fit. So you're just gonna type in Y1, it will automatically become sub one for you. And so you just type in Y1 and then the tilde, which is approximate, M X1 plus B. And when you do that, it will take all of this data here and it will create a line of best fit. Notice that this line here just fits in nice and perfectly with all of those points as best as possible. You have a few points that are below it, you have a few points that are above it. And then it gives you all of the statistics down here. Just FYI, if I created a new data table underneath here, it would become X sub two, Y sub two. So then if I wanted to create a new line of best fit, I would have to change this to Y sub two and x sub two so that it took from that other data set. 
So now let's take a look at um, our information here. I have my parameters, which is M, that's going to be my slope. I have my B, which is my Y intercept, that's where it crosses the Y axis. So let's first talk about those. So my M is my slope, 1.5. Remember we were talking about um, how many centimeters the bathtub went up every minute. So this would be mean that the bathtub raise, raises 1.5 centimeters per minute. Next we have uh, the B. B is our y-intercept, so that's 5.3. So that means that uh, the bathtub was 5.3 centimeters full at the start. Lastly, we're going to look at our R value. You don't need to worry about the R squared or the E plot or anything like that. That is something that's in a higher statistics course. For our class, we're just going to worry about what this R value is here. Note that, notice that it's 0 0.9972. That is really, really close to 1. So if you remember back on page 113, I talked to you about what that means. When it's really, really close to 1 like this, it means that it has a strong positive correlation. If you haven't already done it, then I would like for you to please go back to Desmos, go back to your Desmos tab and try this out and make sure that you see all the same information that I do. And that's it. Thanks for watching.